Hey ladies and gentlemen, I thought it might be best if I did a uh, short couple of videos about the memory chapter because when we get back after the reading days next week, uh, we will have very little time to go through this. So what I'd like to do is go through, um, let's see how we do this, is to go through the memory chapter and um, do it fairly quickly so that uh, I'm condensing some of the uh, concepts and experiences of the PowerPoint and um, just hitting on some of the major concepts that I think are important for you to remember. I thought you might enjoy another Zitz cartoon, so here you go. <clears throat> you know how I like Zitz. Perfect, huh? Okay, uh, the objectives basically are to describe the procedures involved in memory, the structure of memory, um, some of the uh, organizational perceptions that we have that impact our memory and uh, take a look at how it deteriorates over time and hopefully take a look at some things that may help us to remember memory a lot better. So at the very foundation, it's a process. It's an information processing system. It involves three separate parts, encoding, storage, and retrieving. Encoding is what you're doing right now as you look at this. PowerPoint, listen to me, uh, process that information, and then you're hopefully storing it somewhere so that you can retrieve it later. Uh, for instance, if we have an exam. You might know and you might not. You may assume that memory is like a video recorder, <clears throat> but it's very interpretive and reconstructive. We all have a unique perception of the world around us, so we literally focus on different um, parts of an experience and then we reconstruct inside a memory of that experience. When we retrieve it, we are again reconstructing. So there are multiple places where we can have some breakdowns in the recording, so to speak, of the world around us and our experiences. People tend to think that didactic memory or <clears throat> photographic memory is more common than it is. It's actually quite rare. Uh, there is an Olympics for memory records, uh, and uh, a fellow by the name of Andy Bell has uh, held most of the records. He uh, demonstrates the um, potential, let's say, of human memory, and therefore it gives us an idea of what we could possibly uh, accomplish. So let's take a look at ours. Uh, in the PowerPoint, which I hope you went through already, it asks you to name the seven dwarfs. And that's a tough task for a couple of reasons. Number one, it may have been a long time since you saw uh, this movie. Uh, you may not have liked it at the time. You may not like them now. Uh, it also involves uh, the environment that you're in and how much effort you really want to put to remembering that information or retrieving that information. So there's three memory functions, encoding, storage, retrieval. Encoding is just the processing of the information. Uh, it's very similar to what you would do if you were typing it into a computer. Or perhaps if you were at a party and you were trying to get a hold of and trying to remember a particular girl's name. You'd want to retain that information uh, over a period of time, especially if it was a, a good-looking young lady. Uh, and the, these frost guys, or whatever, what, I'm not being politically correct right now, I'm sorry. Storage is like putting that information into the computer, hitting Control S, uh, putting it into a file, and uh, similar to repeating information uh, when you first hear it. Retrieval is simply getting that information out. Uh, it's like looking for a document and then uh, pulling that information out so that you can do something with it. Okay, now let's take a look at another aspect of this. Um, if you were to have written down the seven dwarfs and didn't do so well, uh, here's a bit of a help for you.
Hopefully, that would provide you with enough cues that you could then get all seven of the seven dwarfs. <clears throat> this is a process demonstrating retrieval. Um, which is easier? Is it easier for you to recall information or recognize information? Well, clearly, it's easier to recognize, which is one of the reasons that most of us like multiple choice tests, because you are recognizing information as opposed to a short answer or a essay where you have to recall all the information. So there's three basic functions, right? Encoding, storage, and then retrieving. So memories, when we are encoding them, we're going to kind of go a little bit deeper into those three functions. Uh, we tend to transform our sensory information. Now we've talked about this in sensation and perception, and you'll recall that we recall that we transduce uh, sensory information from our into our neural inputs into the brain. We also are transforming sensory experiences um, as we are putting them away, so to speak. And there's three stages to this uh, aspect of putting things into storage. Sensory memory, oh my bad, working memory, long-term memory. So at the first stage, sensory memory, this is extremely fast. Uh, this is your neural activity, uh, sensing information on the outside. Uh, it's demonstrated here where you would be able to take a look at a series of letters and then try to remember as many as you could in a short period of time. So there, if you were to have done that exercise, you would have been able to recall maybe none, but maybe up to the entire amount of nine. Chances are you probably got a couple of them or maybe half of them because our uh, sensory memory is so quick, it's difficult to hold all of that in our working memory. Generally, we can do about 12 uh, with some practice, um, but also generally three or four items disappear before they even get into our sensory memory. So this sensory register uh, is a, a component of each sense. Uh, visual, auditory, tactile, olfactory, and gustatory. Each of those senses has a sensory memory that's very quick, and we have to do something with that information to get it into the working memory and then work with it in order to get it into long-term memory. So working memory, <clears throat> that's where the idea of attention comes in, where we attend to the stimuli that are coming in, and we attach some meaning to that stimulation in order to process it. We associate it with something else, a visual stimuli. Uh, how about a song? You're on, driving along and you hear a song on the radio, and it brings back a memory. That's an association that you made with a previous event. So encoding that information is important in that we attach meaning to it so that we can put it into long-term memory. So working memory has a capacity also. It's seven plus or minus two chunks of information. Now, a chunk could be a letter, could be a number, but it also could be one chunk could be my best friend's phone number comprising seven bits of information, but it's my best friend, so I associate that as one chunk of information. It could be a concept. Democracy is important to our freedom, and that being the case, that's a single chunk of information. So you can see how chunks can build upon each other and become greater and more complex. Um, that information, though, the attaching of meaning, associating it, is uh, about 20 seconds in duration. So you've got to do something with that information uh, in order to put it into long-term memory. One of the things that we often do is we re rehearse. Uh, we say the phone number over and over again. 
we say the name of somebody important to us that we've just met over and over again, hopefully to get that into long-term memory. So each of the sensory, uh, each of the senses has uh, long, has a memory associated with it that we have to get into working memory. So how do we do that? How do we work with information? <clears throat> and we actually have a central executive, a function that directs our attention to the input that we're looking at. Uh, temporarily stores, could be sounds, could be visions. Um, these are ways that we have, these are ways that we uh, work on the, the information in our working memory. It looks somewhat like this. I think this uh, diagram is in your uh, in your textbook, where your central uh, executive takes sensory information. Oops, what happened here? Where your uh, central executive takes that information, puts it into and works with it in a episodic buffer sketch pad or a loop, um, and then that helps put it into, put it into long-term memory. Oh, I see what's happening. Okay. Alrighty, so this is a demonstration of short-term memory. If you were to have looked at those uh, numbers, then trying to recall them would show you, would show you about how much uh, working memory you have. So ways to improve working memory, which is an important, especially for studying. One of the most important is to chunk the information, put it into a smaller number of meaningful units. Clearly, like if you've got a bunch of vocabulary that you've got to learn, put it into sections of, let's say, groups of five. Uh, and then that way you would have an easier time of it. Or you could associate a word with a past experience. So when I talk about uh, um, encoding, uh, you could associate that with a time in the past uh, where you remember encoding information, really working at getting some information in. Uh, there's a number of websites I'll put out there for you. Uh, this is one of them, so if you'll take a picture of that. Uh, this is a uh, website that helps you with chunking. Uh, it gives you examples and uh, provides a bunch of uh, examples of different chunking. Maintenance rehearsal is that is that simply that sense of I'm repeating it to myself. Keep repeating it, keep repeating it. A lot of times we do this vo with vocabulary where we'll say the word and the definition and then the next one and and then back to the first one, then the second, and then start in the third, and then do the first, the second, the third. That type of thing is what we call maintenance rehearsal. Elaborative rehearsal is a little bit more elaborate. In other words, we're rehearsing something, uh, but also um, expanding on it. So, for instance, uh, if I was remembering the countries of South America, uh, for me, uh, Chile, I would uh, actually visualize chili being poured over the top of the continent and dripping down the side. So that would remind me that that's chili. Colombia is very easy. I associate that with the old, uh, in the 60s, 70s, a lot of the drugs came through Colombia into Panama and into the United States. So that's kind of there for me. Brazil, I just picture it as the biggest country and that makes it easier for me. So I can elaborate using visual auditory uh, additions, so to speak, to help me remember uh, information. Acoustic encoding. You might remember Billy Joel's song, uh, We Light the Fire, which was an outstanding song for world history events. Uh, it, had a, it had the tune, it was catchy, and it, it listed a lot of the world events that, as social studies teachers, we wanted students to remember. You can do that also, uh, especially uh, in terms of rapping. 
where you uh, create a song uh, 